like I have ran a 5K. I'm winded. Winded. Nikki, I have no idea what you go through when you're winded, but I'm thankful that you know that someone does know. If you got your Bibles, I would like for you to turn to John chapter 3 this morning. And I will do my best to be as swift as possible, but God has a purpose (laughs) in everything this morning, and he has brought us to this chapter in our fundamental series. Let me quickly remind you of what we've talked about thus far in our fundamental series. God is one. There's only one God. The world makes a lot of others, but there's only one true living God. Secondly, God gave us his word. Thirdly, we talked about the fall. Man sinned. We rebelled. Then we talked about the same topic, the fall it escalated. It showed our depravity as we fell into deeper and deeper sin. We talked about salvation is by grace alone. We talked about we are justified by Jesus' act of mercy and sacrifice. There on the cross, last Sunday we talked about salvation is free uh, because Jesus paid the price for you. And today, we talk about you must be born again. If you've got your Bibles, turn to John 3, verse number 1. If you will, please stand with me in honor of God's Word. John 3, verse number 1. There was a man from the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews, This man came to him at night and said, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can perform these signs you do unless God were with him. Jesus replied, Truly I tell you, unless someone is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your word this morning. God, thank you for all you've done this morning. Uh, God, you have just blessed us, I mean, more than what we deserve. And God, we, we're not going to be greedy. God, we just not step in the door. God, you drug us in the door this morning. And we're up at the table. God, we see things that are precious on the table. You let us eat some of them. God, you're still delivering more. God, let me just eat all that you have. Nicodemus. It just, I mean, blew him out of the water. It confounded him. And it still confounds, confuses people today. So what does it mean to be born again? What does it mean to be born again? We have to understand born again in its simplest term means made new, regenerated. Regenerated. Now I've heard of rebuilt engines, uh, one of our former cars had had the transmission rebuilt in it. Uh, praise the Lord, it was under warranty when it got rebuilt, and the rebuilt one lasted 130,000 miles longer than the original one did. So and somebody did something right with the rebuilt one anyway. So other than the original one, we've talked about all that regeneration is something different. I'm not talking about rebuilt. This is not a reset or a redo. You play some video games, you get the reset button and start over again. 
or if you die in a certain thing or you have a crash or whatever, you can just start over again to the last point. It's not a reset or a redo button. It's a new life. It's a new life in Christ. That's what born again means. It means you're made new. It's a figurative term, yes, but it's also the most profound theological term and teaching and understanding that God has ever given to mankind. It's a theological theological mountain peak. No, he said yes. And he forgave me of my sins. I was made new. What does it mean to be born again? It means to be made new. Nicodemus asked him, we know you're from God. You have to be from God because no one can do what you do unless they're sent by God. Jesus tells him, truly I tell you, unless someone is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. You see how rapidly Jesus took the conversation to something that Nicodemus needed to grasp. It wasn't about the works, the miracles. It was about the person he was talking to. It was about the person he had encountered. It was Jesus. Nicodemus asked him, well then, how can anyone be born when he is old? Can he enter his mother's womb a second time he's born? No, that's impossible. We understand that. Nicodemus understood that, but he wanted to know, what are you talking about? Jesus told him, truly I tell you, unless someone is born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Why do we need to be born again? Why do we need to be born again? For we've talked about this. We've established this in our fundamentals, in our study of Romans chapter 3 and 6. tells us that we're sinners. All of us are sinners. All of us are wicked people. We've done evil things. We can't go into the kingdom of God, eternal life, like we are. In 1 Corinthians 15, I know it's one of the longest chapters, and I gave this to you for homework not too long ago, so hopefully it is fresh on your mind if you've read it. If you haven't read it, in your, in your own time this week, read chapter 15 of 1 Corinthians. It's a wonderful chapter. Look at verse 50, though. Verse 50 of 1 Corinthians 15. What I am saying, brothers and sisters, is this. Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor can corruption inherit incorruption. That's why you've got to be born again. That's why these in this box have got to be born again, to have a new life in Christ. These names, these people that we're praying for, you wrote their names on cards. You gave them to me. I took them for three weeks. Dwight's had them for a week. I'm hopefully going to send them home with somebody else today. I've still got the names. God knows who they are. They need to be born again. Why? Because they're wicked. They're evil. Just like we were. Just like we were until Christ came. Now, we can still do evil things too. I know that. But when I do things that are wrong, I'm immediately convicted by a spirit. On the way down this morning, after I'd stopped by my mom's on the way down and dropped some stuff off there, on the way down here, I told Brandon, I feel like I'm trying to shove two months worth of work into two days in my brain. And it ain't working. So much going on. And as I drove on, I began, I just didn't say a word. Just held her hand as I drove. And I'm talking to God in that moment. In that moment, I'm thinking, okay, God, I know what's going on better now than I did a few moments ago. Because it's the enemy. It's the wicked one. It's the one who doesn't want us to focus upon him. I'm back here as you are singing and praising God a few moments ago. I'm back there thanking God that he's igniting us. 
Man, he's lit a fire in this place. We're experiencing revival. We don't have to have come every night. We're experiencing revival. Why do we need to be born again? We are sinners. All of us are. Romans 6, 23 says, verse, chapter 3, verse 23 says, all of us have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Chapter 6, 23 says, guess what? The wages of sin is death. Doom, gloom, agony on me. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Jesus Christ our Lord. That's why we need to be born again. We need to be cleansed from our sin. When you look back in chapter 3 of John, chapter 3, truly I tell you, verse 5, unless someone is born of water and the Spirit. Now, there's a debate about the water. There's that baptism. Well, sort of it is. Is it physical birth? Nah. You know what? I, I believe that every child who has died in the womb of their mother is in heaven today. I believe that. Fully believe that. I believe when that mother gets to heaven, if they know Christ, they get to heaven, that child will be there waiting on them. I fully believe that. Huh. You, you will not get me to deny that at all. The water here, water is like a cleansing aspect. You go back and look at the law. If you touch something that was unclean, if you touch a, a, a dead animal, you had to wash your clothes with water and yourself and be unclean until the evening. That was in the law, Leviticus. Everybody loves Leviticus, right? Okay. That's what it means. That's what it says. The cleansing, the water cleans that person from the uncleanness. I mentioned this morning, Sunday ago, the woman who it was an issue of blood for 12 years, she was unclean. And everybody she touched, everything she touched made it unclean. Until she met Jesus. Until she encountered Jesus. She wasn't unclean any longer. Because he cleansed her that day of her disease. But also saved her soul. In 1981, I got dwight by a few years there, okay? In 1981, I was unclean. Unclean in my sin. Until I met Jesus. Or he met me, I should say. He changed me. He took me from being unclean and washed me that day. My sins were washed away. We can't see God's eternal kingdom if we aren't born again. Because you're not going to live forever here. I told you in verse 50 of chapter 15 of 1 Corinthians, the flesh cannot inherit God's eternal kingdom. It ain't going to happen. The flesh, the sinful flesh, we are not going to enter God's eternal kingdom like we are now. We've got to be changed. We've got to be born again. How can we be born again? How can we be born again? You read on in his encounter there with Nicodemus. Whatever is born in the flesh is flesh. The flesh is going to die. <laughs> but whatever is born in the spirit is spirit, and it's going to live forever. Do you see? Do not be amazed that I told you that you must be born again. The wind blows where it pleases, and you hear its sound, but you don't know where it comes from or where it's going. So it is with everyone born of the Spirit. How can these things be, asked Nicodemus. Jesus said, are you a teacher of Israel and don't know these things? Truly, I tell you, we speak what we know and we testify what we have seen. But you do not accept our testimony. If I have told you about earthly things and you don't believe, how will you believe I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, the Son of Man, Jesus. Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, so that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. And if you have eternal life, guess what you get? You get the kingdom of God. If you've got the kingdom of God, you've got Jesus. If you've got Jesus, that means you've been born again. Do you understand? That's how it works. Verse 15. So that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. Verse 16. I don't even need to read it, do I? For God so loved the world 
that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life not in this life not here you know I, I asked Jacob this morning Laney had nodded off to sleep I asked I said Jacob do you ever just do this sometimes just kind of stare at your kid he shook his head yeah all good dads do that you know you just you look when they're asleep you just kind of just look at them when they're asleep you know one of my most precious times was Hannah was I mean less than a year a year or so maybe for our son had come and I had to, Brandy was back teaching and I would have to take Hannah to Brandy's mom dad's house during the day and Brandy had to leave early she had to travel a, a drive and I had a few extra minutes and I would just hold Hannah on my shoulder and I've joked about recreating that picture at some point in time but she's as tall as I am almost you know but that's precious times how quickly they go away because we are not going to live in this body forever We've got to be born again. And because of what Christ has done for me, what Christ has done for my daughter, one of my daughters and my son, I'll get to live with him in God's kingdom forever. Because of what Jesus has done. There's names in this box that aren't going to be in that kingdom. There's other names you know, other people you know, that aren't going to be in that kingdom. We've got to tell them they've got to be born again, and we've got to tell them why, and we've got to tell them how. It is accomplished. It is accomplished not by a physical birth, like our first one, we come out of our mother's womb. No, it's not like that. It's, imp it's impossible. Well, Paul, the Bible says anything's impo nothing's impossible to God. Why would God need to do that? Huh? That goes against, that goes against nature itself. No. God's not talking about a physical rebirth. That's where you get that reincarnation teaching from, okay? <laughs> that leads you right to hell. What he's talking about is a rebirth of your soul, of your inner person. It's accomplished by the Spirit of God. It's accomplished at that, at, when you accept Christ your Savior, you're born again, you're made new. By believing and confessing, faith in Jesus Christ. Romans chapter 10. I, I've read this so many times lately that you're tired of hearing it, and I, but I'm not tired of reading it. Uh, Romans, uh, you're not tired of hearing it either. I know you're not. But Romans 10 verse 9, if you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. One believes the heart resulted in righteousness and confesses, one confesses with the mouth resulting in salvation. For the scripture says, everyone who believes on him will be not be put to shame since there is no distinction between Jew and Greek because the same Lord of all richly blesses all who call on him. For everyone. This is what you got to tell these people. You got to tell them. Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved will be born again we gotta tell them what does it mean why and how how spirit makes us new then lastly I ask you you've already been asked have you been born again have you I told you when I was, I'm, I'm a little jealous of Dwight. I don't remember the exact, exact date. I just know it was 1981. It was not September or October. I just know that much. Don't remember the exact date. Guess what? I don't care. It's all right. I know it happened. <laughs> I know it's real. I know it ain't been the same since. Have you experienced it? Have you been cleansed? Are you still in your sin? Are you unclean before God? If you were to die today, where are you going? This is the last day. Are you going to be in God's kingdom? 
or in Satan's kingdom. And I hate to even use that term because it's really, no, you're already in Satan's kingdom now. But Satan's not going to be a ruler in hell. His kingdom's going to come to an end when God does away with sin. Satan's not going to be the warden of hell. He's going to be an occupant there. He's going to be a resident there, a prisoner there, with everyone who has rejected Christ as their Savior. Will you be a part of God's kingdom? Will you be? Have you been born again? If not, what are you waiting on? If not, what's holding you back? If not, what's better out there? Is there something better than God? I told you our first message in this fundamental series that God gave me was that there's one God, only one, that's true, that's living. There's only one. Well, I don't want to know what God tell me what to do. Then why are you here? Well, somebody made me come. Thank God they made you come. Thank God they made you come because now you can hear that God loves you. That you, yes, you are a sinner. That yes, you've done bad things. But God still loves you. I bet the person who brought you, guess what? They love you. They loved you enough to bring you here, right? So that you can hear that God loves you. They want you to be born again. Every one of these kids that were up here with me a few moments ago, I want every one of them to be born again, you know? I want to hear, I want to know that God has wrote their name in the Lamb's Book of Life in heaven. And someday when their life comes to an end, which I hope is a long time past mine, because I do not want to do any of their funerals, amen? I want to know that when I'm dying on my deathbed, I know where every one of those kids are going. Not because of me, not because of you, but because of Jesus has saved their soul. But he let us be a little part of it. He let us spend a little time with them. He let you spend a little time with them. He let you love on them. He let me love on them. He let us love on them. And he let us be a part of what miracle he's doing in their lives. That's how good God is. Have you experienced the new birth in Christ? I ask you, if not, what are you waiting on? What's holding you back? Is it doubt? Is it you want to do everything else under the sun before you come to Christ? Is it just you don't understand? Let me, let, me, let me answer that one question. If you don't understand how to be saved, my, my word to you is to open up God's word. Read, just start reading in John chapter 1. It will not lead you wrong on how you can be saved. When you get done with the Gospel of John, you read Paul's epistle to the Romans. It will not lead you wrong. It will show you exactly who you are, with God or without God. It'll show you where you're going with God. It'll show you where you're going without God. That's all you need to understand is if you have God, you're going to be with him in heaven. If you don't have God, you're going to be without him in hell. That's all you need to understand. And the fact that you are a sinner. I am, we are, all of us are. But God still loves us and sent his son Jesus Christ to die for our sins. Don't make it so hard. Just admit it. Just admit it. Hey, I'm wicked. I ain't gonna, I'm not going to hide it. I'm not going to deny it. I'm not going to try to cover it up. I'm just going to say it. I am a sinner. I'm wicked. But God, your word tells me you still love me. Aren't you glad he still loves you? I mean, I'm sure glad he still loves me with all the things I've done. Admit it. And then, tell, and then hold God to his word. God, you said that if I admit that I'm a sinner, and if I admit that I believe that you are Jesus Christ, the Son of God, that I can be saved. Hold God to his word. Tell him, this is what you said, God, that if I believe this and confess this, you will save me. Just believe it. Hold God to his word. If I believe it. I believe what God's word says. I do. 
he tells me in Romans 10, verse 13, everyone who calls on him will be saved. Everyone. That means me, you, anybody. And when I, when I, I don't remember what I prayed either. Don't try to make it so hard that you have to remember every step of the way. God's the one who gives you the faith. Just stand up and say, I want Jesus. That's all you need. Don't let Satan tell you, you can't have him. God's already sent him. And you've heard this morning that he's coming back. And when he comes back, he's going to take those who are ready home to be with him. And only those who are ready are those who've been born again. If you've not been born again, why not? Let's pray. Father, we thank you. We praise you. And we love you. Thank you for saving a sinner like me. But Father, right now, there may be some here that have never trusted Christ as their Savior. How can they deny the outpouring of your Spirit today? Father, I pray that you'll speak to them. As we've been praying, God, give them the faith to believe. Give them the courage to confess. And save their souls from hell today, Father. We love you and praise you. We ask all these things in Christ's name. Amen.